20th of December, 2021. Local time, 3.10 a.m. With 372 people on board, the Emirates Flight 231 was climbing out of Dubai International Airport on the cold December night, roaring down runway 30 right. Everything seemed perfectly normal, but just 11 seconds after liftoff, something went terribly wrong. Instead of rising into the sky, the plane stopped climbing, and then suddenly it started to fall Then it was still at full speed, just 200 feet above the ground, which is lower than some buildings in Dubai. But what happened after this and why right after the takeoff was it unable to climb? This is the breathtaking story of Emirates Flight 231, a flight that came terrifyingly close to disaster. What happened next became a chapter in aviation history. That day, Dubai airport was packed as usual. Among the many Emirates jets lined up for long-haul trips, this Boeing 777 was ready to head all the way to Washington, D.C. That meant a long flight. Two full sets of pilots. Everything had to be perfect. The first captain showed up about 10 minutes late, but quickly caught up. And the first officer was already in the cockpit going through all the steps. That's when he noticed something odd on the main screen in front of him, which is called the flight mode annunciator. It showed toga rollout. That means the engines were set for full takeoff power, which sounds normal. But the plane hadn't been cleared or configured for takeoff mode. So he tried to reset it, but it didn't work. The toga setting or the takeoff go around stayed locked in. And he made a note to bring it up later. They planned to take off from a taxiway called Mike 13 Alpha. So they punched in the numbers for that. But minutes later, they switched to Mike 14 Alpha, which was a bit further down, a longer stretch of runway. So they redid the math. At exactly 3.10 in the clock, the jet rolled onto the runway. The engines roared and the plane accelerated quite fast until it reached 181 knots. So that's over 200 miles per hour. Then came the liftoff. The massive jet pointed its nose upward around 10 degrees and began to climb. But that lasted only for 11 seconds. In the meantime, the first officer calmly called out, positive rate. That was the signal to retract the gear. But after that, instead of rising, the jet simply stalled, maintaining the altitude it was at. And moments later, it started to fall, not by much, but enough to set off warning alarms. A 200-ton aircraft full of fuel and people flying just above rooftops suddenly refused to climb. Without a doubt, something had to be terribly wrong. But what and how did things go so wrong so fast inside that cockpit? The answer was already there, staring them in the face, waiting for them to notice. Meanwhile, the nose already started to dip. And just ahead was one of the world's most iconic skylines. Dubai with its towering buildings, razor-sharp silhouettes, and absolutely no room for error. At this point in a flight, pilots generally expect a clean 15-degree nose-up pitch. That's like pulling a shopping cart uphill. But the flight director's screen, the digital guide that acts like a virtual horizon, was telling the captain to level off, which means stop climbing and maintain the current altitude. And that didn't make sense, but still she followed it. But it kept her thinking, was the aircraft heavier than planned? Was there a miscalculation in the fuel or passenger weight? And none of it added up. Outside, the bright Dubai lights rushed past the windows just a few floors below, way too close. Everyone in the cockpit made all the possible attempts to make the plane climb. But the nose stayed stubbornly low. And despite all their efforts, the aircraft had only climbed to 160 feet. That's the height of a 15-story building. Just one wrong-placed skyscraper and Flight 231 would have been reduced to fire and wreckage in the middle of a sleeping city. But surprisingly, still, they kept going. The captain pushed the throttles even harder, commanding more thrust. The engines roared, the plane gained speed, but not altitude. And then came another blow, the flaps. They were originally set to 15 degrees to help with lift. The jet's automatic system sensed they were going too fast. To stay safe, the plane pulled its flaps back to five degrees. That means less air resistance, but also less lift, like trying to fly with shorter wings. So they were already flying low and still not gaining height. 
And to worsen the matter, the one thing helping them stay up had just backed off. Naturally, things were going downhill fast. With no other options, the pilots pressed the toga button. Take off, go around. A kind of panic mode that pushes the engines to their absolute max. And finally, the nose began to rise. The Boeing 777 clawed its way into the night sky, leaving the glowing city behind. They had literally brute forced their way out of disaster. The relief captain, his face pale, looked at the captain and asked gently, Do you need a break? She answered with a quiet strength, It's over. It has passed. Carry on. But none of them would forget how close they were to crash on buildings. However, why didn't the plane climb in the first place? Instead of climbing, the plane stayed too low. Just seconds after takeoff, the giant Boeing was barely off the ground, shaking, struggling to rise. Inside the cockpit, alarms started blaring, but from the outside, everything looked normal. The engines were fine, the controls worked, so why wasn't the plane climbing? Let's rewind a few minutes, back to the cockpit. Right in front of the pilots is a small panel called the Mode Control Panel, or MCP. It's like a remote control for the plane's autopilot. Pilots use it to tell the aircraft how high to fly, how fast, and which direction. It connects to a bigger system, the Autopilot Flight Director System, or AFDS. That's the brain that tells the pilots what to do through guidance bars on their screens. Now, this system has different modes depending on what the plane needs to do. Two of the most important ones, TOGA, used for climbing during takeoff, and ALT, short for altitude hold. ALT mode tells the plane to stay at a certain height, and here's where it all went wrong. When the plane was first powered up in Dubai, it automatically entered ALT mode, because the altitude set on the MCP was zero, just zero feet. It's true that some pilots use 0000 as a reminder to enter the real number later, like a sticky note. And since Dubai is basically at sea level, the system thought this was fine. So it slipped into alt mode, ready to hold the plane right on the ground. But that's not the right altitude setting when you take off. In the investigation report, it turned out that the officer entered their scheduled height of 4,000 feet there. But the altitude hold mode didn't go off if the first officer noticed it. He even tried to fix it. But things got busy. Radios, checklists, calls from the tower. And he got distracted, thinking it was a trivial issue. He planned to tell the captain, though, but never did. So the plane took off with alt mode active. This means the target altitude of the plane was always zero feet, which is the ground. That's why the system was quietly telling the pilots, stay low, don't climb. And the captain, trusting the flight director's bars, unknowingly followed that command. The engines were pushing full power, but the nose didn't rise much. And no one noticed this error until it was almost too late. Inside the cockpit, the captain ignored the strange command and tried to pull up, but the controls were stiff. The captain had to fight hard just to keep the plane climbing. Meanwhile, the speed was rising fast, way too fast for a normal takeoff. Seconds after liftoff, the jet was already on the edge of overspeed, but the captain didn't know why, but what she didn't realize was this all started long before the plane left the ground. Because earlier, while getting ready, the crew missed one small but critical detail. It's the altitude mode that we were talking about. It was set to ALT, short for altitude hold. Everyone only focused on the screen above the controls, the flight mode enunciator, and there, all the signals were green. And green usually means good to go. The captain glanced at it quickly and moved on. Not only that, there was another clue. The pitch bar, which is a visual line that shows how to lift off, was flatline. Normally, it shows a small upward angle, telling the pilots to pull the nose up after takeoff. But in this flight, that didn't happen and no one bothered to question it. Why? Because they were in a hurry. Flights run on tight schedules, and when you've done the same thing hundreds of times, your brain starts filling in the blanks. That's called expectation bias. The captain expected the plane to be set upright, so she didn't check up on all these basics. And the even scariest part was the first officer or the second pilot who did notice the ALT mode before but didn't say anything. Why? Because he also trusted the plane. Modern jets like the Boeing 777 are filled with safety systems and automation. When you fly it every day and nothing ever goes wrong, you start to believe the plane won't let you make a mistake. But during the investigation, that's what turned out to be the major reason behind this near crash situation. According to them, the crew had so much faith in the system, they believed the aircraft simply wouldn't allow unsafe settings during takeoff. So when the first officer saw the wrong mode, he likely thought, the plane knows what it's doing, took a mental note, and moved on casually. 
But this time, the plane's modern safety system failed them. It pushed them toward a crash, threatening not just the lives of the crew and passengers, but also a large part of the city. But after this incident, several experienced 777 pilots revealed a pattern. The altitude knob had been set to 4,000 feet, but that's possible only after the flight director was already on. In the 777's autopilot logic, that's a hidden trap. So if you turn on the flight director before setting the target altitude, it automatically locks onto the plane's current height, which is zero feet or ground level. So even though the first officer entered 4,000 in the altitude selector, the autopilot was already in altitude hold, holding them at the runway height. In other words, the system wasn't broken, it was just not that user-friendly. Now the point is, the first officer should report the note to the captain, but he said nothing. Why? No one knows clearly. This time, the flight made it. The plane climbed out barely. The danger passed. But think about this. What if they'd waited just a few seconds longer? What if the nose dropped a little more? Would the engines have saved them? Or would we be talking about a crash? Tell me in the comments, do you think this was a close call or a disaster that just didn't happen yet? And subscribe to this channel if you want to know more aviation disaster stories like this. Until we meet next, fly safe.